the previous generation Audi L Road replaced the A4 Avan in the US model range for the 2013 model year, sales increased by 50%. Yes, hardcore Audi aficionados went ballistic about the lack of a regular A4 wagon, or A4 Avan in Audi speak, but understand that a regular station wagon isn't what the American car buying public purchases. While many people, including us, would prefer the lower, sportier wagon it offers in Europe, Audi is also in the business of selling vehicles and making profit. So, when the newest, B9 generation A4 range launched earlier this year, it was an easy decision for US product manager Anthony Garbas to skip the regular wagon and go right for the Al Road, now carrying the A4 moniker as well. This Al Road follows the formula that brought two predecessors, the A6 Al Road and the B8 generation A4 based Al Road to our shores, lift the wagon, install permanent roof rails, and slap on some chunky body cladding. That's oversimplifying the task but isn't completely off base. The maddest 1.3-inch lift comes from both longer springs and dampers, 0.9-inch and slightly taller all-season Continental Pro Contact TX radials, 0.4-inch. The roof rails are aluminum and stout enough that they might serve as tow hooks. The cladding adds no width to that of a standard A4, even if it looks as if it does. Even better. The add-ons aren't just raw plastic. Garbas, with a hint of pride in his voice, confirms that the two-tone Alroads pack on bits are painted, mud black, an expensive process, we're told. Those who hate the two-tone look can get the plastic painted to match the body color for $1,575. The monotone option itself costs $1,000 but is offered only with metallic paints that add another $575 to the sticker. Quattro goes ultra. The only other attribute that makes this Alroad special is its new all-wheel drive system, marketed as Quattro with Ultra technology. The ultra business of this system dumps a center differential for a pair of clutches, one at each end of the rear axle's drive shaft. Under most conditions, the Alroad functions as a front driver for a slight bump in efficiency. Not spinning the drive shaft saves precious drops of fuel, and said shaft can be re-engaged in as little as 0.2 seconds. While it is an understandable step toward meeting cafe regulations, we also see it as a critical departure from the traditional all-wheel drive Quattro Cannon. Expect the system to appear in other Audis, although all S and RS models will continue to use center differentials. Except for the new all-wheel drive system, the powertrain is a direct carryover from the A4. A 2.0-liter turbocharged inline 4 with cam facers and variable exhaust valve lift makes 252 horsepower and 273 pounds to foot of torque. Ratios are swapped by a dual-clutch automatic with paddle shifters for manual gear changes, if that's your thing. The 7 forward ratios are identical to those in the A4, but a shorter final drive ratio, 4.41 to 1 versus 4.23 to 1, combats the resistance of taller tires and the claimed 199 pound penalty for the wagon bodywork. The A4 Al Road is more than capable of keeping up with the briskest traffic, and we expect it to return a launch control assisted 0 to 60 mile per hour time in the mid 5 second range. A plus accommodations. Those familiar with Audi's most recent interiors will feel comfortable in the Al Road. Solid black is available, but the two-tone interiors are especially rich in appearance and feel. In the $44,950 premium trim model, analog gauges fill the binnacle behind the pleasant and well-contoured steering wheel. Those who want the 12.3-inch full-color virtual cockpit with its configurable gauges and driver-oriented screen will have to select the premium plus trim, $3,000, and its technology package, $3,250, which also includes navigation, an 8.3-inch center screen, and blind spot monitoring. Other premium plus upgrades include a 19-speaker, 755-watt Bang & Dolphson sound system, front and rear parking sensors, proximity key entry, LED headlights, and 4G LTE connectivity and its associated in-car Wi-Fi. 
The standard panoramic sunroof's perforated sunshade is one of very few interior oversights, it doesn't effectively block out the sun. Fully loaded prestige models require a $7,400 upgrade from the base car and include all the premium plus and technology package items, plus a full-color head-up display, acoustically insulated front side windows, and a multi-camera setup with 360-degree top-view functionality to ease low-speed maneuvering for our app. The Al Road Sweet Spot seems to be a premium plus car with the technology and cold weather packages, heated seats and steering wheel, $500, and the Sport Package, which includes the A4 support of 12-way sport seats for another $500, totaling $52,200. That's a few grand more than Audi charges for a similarly equipped Q5 crossover, but there are a few bells and whistles on the Al Road that aren't available on the Q. Not much penalty for lifted suspension. Raising the car a little more than one inch doesn't do much to erode the driving dynamics of the already proficient A4. Unlike the slightly sloppy on center wobble we found in the A4 sedan steering, the Al Roads tracks straight and true, no matter what drive select mode is engaged, and the brakes deliver inspired feedback without so much as a hint of sponginess. A Mon Comfort, Auto, Dynamic, and individual modes, we found auto to do everything well. The steering goes overly light in comfort mode, while choosing dynamic cranks the firmness of the adaptive dampers beyond what a pseudo SUV requires. Auto is the just right porridge for this backwoods bear. The only mode the Al Road offers that isn't in the A4 quiver is off-road. When selected, the steering effort is reduced and Quattro engages the drive shaft all the time, with some clutch slipping when turning to avoid drive line binding. Off-road mode also changes the adaptive damping and disables the forward collision warning and impact intervention so as not to inadvertently stop the car from hitting a tree you weren't going to hit anyway. We drove the Al Road down 90 miles of Wyoming logging roads and engaged off-road some of the time. As was true on paved roads, the auto mode seemed to work just as well as off-road mode. You might see greater benefit to off-road mode in deep snow or on particularly icy roadways. Lots of room, less consumption than an SUV. Remember that mention of fuel economy? The reality is that EPA ratings give the new A4 Al Road a 1 mile per gallon advantage over its predecessor on the combined scale, 25 miles per gallon, with the city rating up just 2 miles per gallon, 23 miles per gallon, and the highway figure unchanged at 28 miles per gallon. The Volkswagen Group may have tightened its EPA reporting leash, well, at this point that might as well be a noose for the 2017 model year, so any improvement greater than marginal might be hidden. We'll learn more when we can test one on familiar roads. The good news for the A4 Al Road sales ambitions is that its combined fuel economy rating tops the Q5s by more than 10%. Open the power rear hatch, which can be operated by wiggling a foot under the bumper in Al Roads equipped with the technology package and the standard cargo cover automatically lifts out of the way to reveal a 24 cubic foot compartment. There also is a divider to protect back seat passengers from loose items, and the seat back folds in 40-20-40 sections for maximum versatility. Drop the seats all the way and there are 59 cubic feet to fill. When the back seats are in place, they're plenty comfortable for two adults, with ample head and knee room. Fitting three would be a squeeze, but it'd be doable over a short distance. Living up to its name, the A4 Al Road is unlikely to meet a mapped road it can't negotiate, even if few owners will attempt anything more daring than making use of the extra ground clearance while trekking through deep snow. An SUV is an obvious solution for this scenario, but in a world rapidly filling with crossovers, that distinctive Al Road faithfully keeps the wagon to watch loop. Those driving an SUV now may discover how much they miss truly car-like dynamics once they encounter the real thing again in the Al Road. Maybe Alper would be a better name, because this is really all the car most people need. People need.